Aside from the tank and media loading, the steps discussed in, in this segment of the video will cover everything that is needed to get this valve and filter online and installed. Starting from the left hand side, we have our drain line flow control assembly, our optional bypass assembly, our straight connectors which are sh shown here are one inch in MP MPT, we have sample drain line flow control washers, the connector assembly, power supply, distributor screen, and the riser pipe, which is 32 millimeters in diameter. Step one of the valve installation will be installing the retainer kit inside the, the valve here. So this comes with two parts. You have the retainer ring and the O-ring. Step one is to put the retainer ring inside and you're gonna hear a clipping noise, which means it's securely fastened and it cannot, it, it will rotate but cannot come out. From there, you would install the O-ring between the valve and the retainer ring. Once the O-ring is securely fastened, uh, Pure Aqua uses the Da11 Corning uh, lubricant which is insoluble in water and safe for membrane systems and you would put a, a good amount here inside the valve. Step 2 of the valve installation would be installing the, th the 32 millimeter distributor screen on the valve body. As you can see here there's this, there's this locking mechanism that would line up with the valve body and would allow this screen to lock in place. Once you line it up you would position this, make sure it's nice and flat and it's, it's centered correctly. You would turn this uh, counterclockwise and once this is properly installed, it cannot be pulled out. If, if needed to be removed, you turn it clockwise, pull out and it is removed. So installation is counterclockwise. Once it's locked properly, it cannot be pulled out. Step three of the valve installation would be installing the inlet and outlet connections on the back side of the valve. When looking at the valve from the back side, it is very important to note the left side is the inlet and the outlet, and the, the right side is the outlet. It's a common misconfusion where people are installing these backwards, which can damage the internals of the valve and damage systems downflow. So again, the left side is the inlet, the right side is the outlet when looking at the valve from the back side. Now turning the valve back down, we will cover the optional bypass. So the bypass essentially allows the valve to be completely bypassed if need to be serviced. So this would be installed directly on here and the connectors would be installed on the front side of the, the bypass. We will cover the installation without the bypass installation as this is how Puraqua's systems are equipped with, without this feature. When installing these connectors, same as the O-ring on the in, inside of the valve, this will, these will need to be lubricated properly with the same type of lubricant. Installed on here, lined up, and this is a, a union style connection where you tighten this hand tight without the use of any tools. Once this is completely hand tight, the inlet connector is properly installed and assembled. The installation of the outlet side of the valve is essentially the same way as the inlet. You would lubricate the O-ring, line it up and push in the connector, hand tighten the union, and once that's complete, your inlet and outlet connections have been properly installed and are complete. Step four of the valve installation will be the preparation of the drain line flow control assembly kit. As shown, this is the blank kit without any washers. There are four pieces that come with this kit. The first piece is your elbow connector and three different size washer housings. Each housing has, is a different size for a particular reason. The smaller housing handles washers up to seven gallons a minute the mid-size housing would handle washers up to 25 gallons a minute and the larger housing handles washers up to 45 gallons a minute. Step one of this preparation process would be to lubricate the O-ring on the retainer ring here where the flow control washer will be installed. We have decided to use the mid-size flow control uh, housing as this is the most common housing Pure Aqua uses for its filters. So it's very important to note that Many different flow rates exist for these washers and the specific washer must be selected based on the media and filter size. This particular one is 12 gallons a minute, but it is completely irrelevant for your installation. Once the proper flow control is selected, you would pop this into place. And it's important to note that 
the, the text is shown, um, it can, can be seen when installed as this is the proper way of installation as this side is smoother than the, than the, the opposite side. Once the drain line housing assembly has been completely installed and configured, you would of course need to install this onto the valve body. Before doing so, you would still need to lubricate our last o-ring here, which is the o-ring shown on the outside of the valve body. And again, this is with the same lubricant we mentioned in the beginning of the video, the Dow 1-1 Corning. Before installation, you would remove the clip. Once the clip has been removed, you would insert the, the housing into the valve. And, and once, once that's done, you would reinsert the clip to make sure this housing is securely fastened. After the drain line flow control assembly has been properly secured and the clip installed, you will notice there's a small label on the back side of the valve that says drain flow. Uh, ignore the injector here for now as this will be discussed in our softener valve series. Now on the drain line, on the drain flow uh, side here, you would just clearly write down or mention what flow control floor it was used just for future service and reference. Step five of the valve installation would be the connection of the power supply or transformer. It is important to know there are several different types of power supply. We have selected the, the US version of this power supply where it comes with the standard 110 connectors. However, a different type of power supply exists with different connectors based on the country of installation. Now, this is a 100 to 240 volt 50, 60 hertz power supply that is very convenient as it can be installed all over the world. When installing the power supply or transformer onto the valve, you must identify the port location, which is on the left side of the valve. And it, it is, I mean, almost hidden here, but once located, you will insert the connection into the valve and securely fasten that. And once that's installed, this part of the installation is complete. In this particular video, we made the assumption that the riser pipe has been properly installed, centered inside the tank, cut to the right length, and the media has been properly loaded. So with that assumption, we'll proceed on providing instructions on how the valve can be installed on top of the tank. This is to demonstrate how the, the riser pipe gets inserted into the valve once it's on top of the tank. You know, I'm going to remove the screen just for detail purposes. However, this screen stays installed during the installation process on the tank head. The riser pipe gets inserted into the center part of the valve. And it's very important that, as mentioned, this part gets lubricated as we, show, as we showed earlier. So as you can see, the riser pipe gets inserted here and it will stop once it hits the top of the valve. Now, so to kind of demonstrate this, when the screen is installed, you insert here, this, the screen helps line up the valve, the, you push the valve down and the riser pipe gets fully inserted. Step six of the valve preparation before it is installed on the tank head is lubricating the outer ring, outer ring here on the bottom part of the valve. So it is very important to lubricate this o-ring so it stays on and it helps properly seal the valve and the tank when properly installed. The valve gets inserted onto the riser pipe. It's very important to make sure the valve is perfectly straight to ensure the o-ring does not tear off. That was shown earlier. Once that's done, the valve gets threaded on to the tank head. Again, it's, it's very important to make sure there's no cross thread here and the valve gets installed correctly. Once the valve is tightened and of course this valve must be installed hand tight once you reach a point where you feel the tank is the, the the valve is tying on the tank you go about a quarter turn or half turn and stop there tightening more can actually damage the valve and the tank head this wraps up our learning center video and we thank you for watching